Welcome to worship at Camrose United Church for October 25th, 2021. My name is Helen Reed, and it is my privilege to be the minister at Camrose United Church. We begin our worship time together with the lighting of the Christ candle. We light this candle aware of God around, among, and within us. And I invite us to take a moment of silence as we prepare ourselves to celebrate God's presence in our community. In the spirit of the living God who reminds us to love all of God's people, we remember that many of us have arrived at this place from other places, from distant shores. For some of us, our families came here years ago. Some of us arrived more recently. When settlers came, they were met by others who were already here, already knew these lands, already lived rich and full lives based on ancient and proud cultures. This is the land we share. Camrose United Church is located on land encompassed by Treaty 6 that was a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Assiniboine, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Nakota Sioux. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. And as treaty people, we affirm our commitment to the principles and actions of reconciliation. Come, friends. Come and experience God's goodness with all your being. Taste and touch, see and hear, smell and wonder, know and believe. Know that in this place God will hear the cries of every voice and every heart. Come and let us proclaim together the goodness of our God. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to this place seeking healing, seeking new life, and seeking wholeness. Help us to throw off the cloaks of our limited imaginations that we may find ourselves forever in your presence. Amen. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Praise the Lord with the harp and lute. Praise the Lord with the gentle sounding flute. Praise the Lord in the field and forest. Praise the Lord in the city square. Praise the Lord any time and anywhere. sunshine. Praise the Lord in the dark of night. Praise the Lord in the rain or snow or in the morning light. Praise the Lord in the deepest valley. Praise the Lord on the highest hill. Praise the Lord, never let your voice be still. Praise the Lord with the crashing cymbal. Praise the Lord with the pipe and string. Praise the Lord with the joyful songs you sing. Praise the Lord on the weekday morning. Praise the Lord on the Sunday noon. Praise the Lord by the light of sun or moon. Praise the Lord in the 
time of sorrow. Praise the Lord in the time of joy. Praise the Lord every moment. Nothing let your praise destroy. Praise the Lord in the peace and quiet. Praise the Lord in your work or play. Praise the Lord everywhere in every way. Our first reading today is from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, uh, verses 1 to 8. And uh, this is based on the common English Bible. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise will always be in my mouth. I praise the Lord. Let the suffering listen and rejoice. Magnify the Lord with me. Together, let us lift God's name up high. I sought the Lord, and God answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to God will shine. Their faces are never ashamed. This suffering person cried out. The Lord listened and saved him from every trouble. On every side, the Lord's messenger protects those who honor God and God delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. The one who takes refuge in him is truly happy. This song of blessing and praise does not come from a life sheltered and safe. In it, we do not hear that God guarantees a life without challenge but that God is present in the worst of times. The psalmist teaches us how the strength of faith can bring us closer to God, even in the unforeseen times of challenge. We are reminded to look for God, to lean into God, to pull ourselves up by God's love and into the journey ahead. In these times, when we don't know where the next challenge is coming from, these are words to give us hope that God is right beside us. Let us praise our God and look for the holy in all of our times and places. Teach me God to invite you to join your hearts together with mine in prayer. Though we desire to follow in the way of Jesus, too often we are held back and weighed down by words and actions that have harmed us, by regrets for things we have said or done or thought, 
by systems that work against us and others, by truths we would rather not see. Forgive us, God. We ask that you continue to walk with us, that you remind us daily to speak and act with love's conviction, to recognize the need for justice, to hold to the truth even when we don't like it. May we be willing to follow your voice and learn and learn and learn to love as you do. Hear these words of assurance. A song from our ancestors of faith reminds us that when we are in trouble, when we call out to God, God is always there for us. God knows our fears, our sorrows, our challenges, and will offer us refuge from them all. Thanks be to God. The second reading today is from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. And this is also based on the Common English Bible. My name is Bartimaeus. I had been unable to see for many years. Without sight, life can be tough. While most people take seeing for granted, being able to play and work when they want to, I wasn't able to join in with them. In fact, over the years, I had become almost invisible to others. My need for help too great for them to cope with. They just left me alone, not wanting to know about my problems at all. In the end, I had to take to the streets of my hometown, Jericho, begging for money and food to survive. What I received was only just enough to get me through. It was tough. I was only thankful for my blindness when I couldn't see the indifference in their faces. How I longed for someone to understand how bad this all felt and to do something about it. Well, one day, not long ago, I was sitting by the side of the road in my usual place when I sensed something good was about to happen. There was a buzz of excitement around the arrival of a teacher and healer from Nazareth who some said was sent by God. I didn't want to miss that. And although I wouldn't be able to see him pass by, I so badly wanted him to see me. Maybe, just maybe, he could heal my blindness. 
I couldn't wait any longer than I did. An overwhelming urge made me cry out over and over again, Jesus, son of David, show your great kindness toward me. I was aware that people around me kept telling me to be quiet, but I didn't care. This was too important for me. The feeling was too strong. I just had to keep shouting. Suddenly, there was a lull in the crowd noise, and I heard a voice telling someone to bring me to Jesus. Take heart, another said. The teacher would like to speak with you. It was all I needed to hear. I threw off my cloak. I left behind my past and told Jesus what I so desperately wanted. Within an instant, I could see. My life had been given back, and I knew at that very moment I wanted to give something back in return. I desperately wanted to stay with Jesus, to go where he would go and follow in his ways. May grant, God grant us understanding of this reading of Scripture. Scripture is our song for the journey, passed down from generation to generation to guide and inspire. God asks us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. The resources used to craft today's service offered me two themes. Peace Sunday, and what do we see? Peace Sunday is often celebrated close to October 24th to honour the founding of the United Nations in 1945. As World War II was about to end in 1945, nations were in ruins and the world wanted peace. Representatives of 50 countries gathered at the United Nations Conference on International Organization in San Francisco, California, from the 25th of April to the 26th of June, 1945. And for the next two months, they proceeded to draft and then sign the UN Charter, which created a new international organization, the United Nations, which it was hoped would prevent another world war like the one they had just lived through. Just over 75 years later, this truly international group is still working to encourage peace and security, to protect human rights and uphold international law, and has added to its portfolio sustainable development goals, and member states have agreed to action to limit global warming. Their mission statement is peace, dignity, and equality on a healthy planet. As people of faith, surely we can see God's call to care for the earth and all of its people in such a statement. Yet we know that humanity can be a fickle thing. To be the peacekeepers of the world, we need to see where there is no peace and to be prepared to make room for it, to nurture it. The story of Jesus and Bartimaeus calls us into seeing a place where help and hope is needed. It calls us into finding our role in offering peace. In today's version of the story, we heard Bartimaeus's experience. We heard him identify the things that held him back from fully engaging in life at that time. He was blind. He had no income. People ignored him. In fact, there were many people who got so used to him that they didn't see him anymore. He felt invisible. But an opportunity presented itself for Bartimaeus to fight for his respect and he took it. He gathered up his courage and shouted out for attention. People around him didn't want to see his need. They pushed him down and pushed him back, but he continued to shout. Jesus heard him and invited him forward. 
Jesus stopped to see and listen for someone who needed dignity, respect, help. Bartimaeus's courage made him visible again. Someone was paying attention and his hope was that he would be healed. First, Jesus asked what Bartimaeus wanted. He started a conversation with him. I wonder if Jesus was taking a moment to help Bartimaeus see beyond the moment, to find out what he really needed and if he was prepared for the consequences. Because if Bartimaeus was healed, then he wouldn't be able to be a beggar anymore. He would have to find a trade or hone work skills, stretching muscles he had never used. People around him would look at him differently. Jesus offered the gift of healing that Bartimaeus was asking for. In turn, Bartimaeus joined in the crowd that followed Jesus, probably hearing the teaching and adding his own, now enhanced, viewpoint at times. Bartimaeus would now know, firsthand, what a difference it could make when someone was seen and heard and helped. In this moment, we might see that the work of Jesus was that of offering peace, dignity and equality to the world he was in. There were others in the story. I wonder what they offered on that day. I wonder if the disciples realized that they had, again, missed another opportunity to care for someone. I wonder who might have stepped forward to walk with Bartimaeus in his new journey. I wonder if there were others who were sitting on the sides, waiting for someone to see them, to hear their stories, to offer them a way to move forward. Both of our scriptures today offer us voices that call for God to help them, and they tell us that God will answer. They also remind us that we have a part to play in holding up those who have been held down, held back. When others cry out, we should stand still, listen, and truly see how help is needed. How many stories do we hear where it is those who have the least strength and resources who must find their courage to shout out and ask for what they need? Do we have to have another world disaster before we can see the need to work together for all of God's people? Surely, we who have more should offer what we can to hold up those who need to find their strength and create a new role in a kinder world. Where are we in these stories? Are we leaning on God in these times of challenge? Are we stepping forward to help when someone names injustice? Are we asking how we can help so that another is felt supported as they move forward? Let us open our hearts and minds so that we can see the possibilities before us to be God's peace and love in the world. Oh
hear the call of Jesus to rise. We hear the call of Jesus to be well. We hear the call of Jesus to follow. We hear the call of Jesus to care. Bless the gifts we offer, O God, and bless the lives of those who give in your service to the world. Amen. We don't always know the extent of the good that we do, even when we're giving generously. Here's a story about your generosity that spans three continents. I am uh, Mambut uh, Kestin Samai. Uh, I am a program coordinator for Single Leg Amputee Sports Association in Sierra Leone. Nearly 20 years ago, Mamboud began a soccer league for amputees who lost limbs in Sierra Leone's decades-long civil war. Now, 350 members strong, the league isn't just about helping amputees heal. Today, the players are teaching farming techniques, and this is where your mission and service gifts come in. Two years ago, Mamboud flew from Sierra Leone to Japan, where he spent nine months learning about sustainable agriculture. He studied at the Asian Rural Institute, which your mission and service gifts support. Sierra Leone uh, is a largely, you know, agricultural community. Uh, but the farmers themselves do not understand the appropriate uh, opportunities in basic uh, sustainable agriculture. After graduating, Mamboud returned to Sierra Leone with a new goal to develop community gardens and teach sustainable agriculture. People like Marietta Muyango, an amputee, are now supporting themselves and their community. She is very now proud that uh, she can take care of herself. She can now manage her own welfare. Uh, I think uh, that's a very big impact. I would like to thank uh, the donors, especially uh, the United Church, the mission to, of uh, United Church of Canada, providing support to ARI. Uh, may, you, may the Lord bless you richly. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. Wherever he leads us, we will follow. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. Wherever he leads us, we will follow. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. We will follow, we will follow Jesus. Wherever he leads us, we will follow. I invite you to join your hearts and voices with mine in the prayers, the pastoral prayers from God's people for God's people. Holy God, there are times when we may feel left on the side of the road as Bartimaeus did. But we also know that if we call to you, you will hear us and help us. We are grateful for your presence with us always. God, we offer our prayers today for leaders in the world. In the last month, we have chosen people to lead us on our continuing life journey. It is a huge responsibility. 
There are those who come with experience. There are those who are now living this role for the first time. May they see your image in those who surround them. May they remember how to care and love. Holy One, we offer our prayers today for those who follow. May they and we realize that followers are learners and listeners. Followers are also about identifying truths to be uncovered. Followers support leaders to make wise and just decisions. May they see your image in those who surround them. May they remember how to care and love. God of all compassion, we offer our prayers today for those who do not have the strength to follow or lead. There are those who cannot join into the walk of life without assistance from others. There are those who are weighted down with ill health, by violence, by poverty, by homelessness, by hunger. There are those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. May they see your image in those who surround them. May they experience care and love. God of our heart, we offer you prayers for ourselves so that we may have eyes open to see those who call for help so that we may learn to be patient to find out what others need, so that we may remember that all voices have a place with you and we must make space for all. May we see your image in those who surround us. Amen. Let us stop and listen for the shouts and whispers of those who need to be heard. In all we say and do, let us seek the kindness of Christ and follow with our whole heart. We are filled with spirit to be led into the daily challenges of life, surrounded by God's grace. Let us go in peace and live into wholeness, now and always. Bless now, O God, the journey that all your people make. The path through noise and silence, the way of give and take. The trail is found in desert and winds the mountain round. Then leads be Side still waters the road where faith is found. Bless sojourners and pilgrims who share this winding way, whose hope burns through the terrace, whose love sustains the Faith
This is the light of Christ, shining into all of the corners of the earth, showing us where we are and where we are meant to be. The Spirit of God, breathe it in, and know that God is indeed with us wherever we go. Amen.